without the IR FFB, you will travel 0.59 feet. And uh, with the IR FFB low latency mode, you will travel 2.2 feet. So it's a big difference. IR FFB has a new update and there are new features and modes. So it's a good idea to go through the settings and I will show you how to set up the IR FFB after the new update. The first thing we have to do, we have to download the IR FFB, of course. Uh, I will leave all the links I will be mentioning in this video in the video description. Then we need the VJOY to run the IR FFB without the delay of the forced feedback. Setting up the VJOY is very easy. I just run the configurator and uh, check X axis and enable all the forced feedback effects. Hit apply and forget. After you have installed IRFFB and VJOY, we can start the IRFFB. But first, let me go through some changes they made. So the most exciting change for me is that now that IRFFB will save your settings for each car and each track. As you know, you have to change your force feedback settings on each track because the force feedback feels different and you have to have uh, separate settings of the force feedback for each track. So this is an amazing feature. We have also a new mode in IRFFB and it's called Auto FFB 360 Smoothing. I will explain it later, but it's a pretty cool feature. We have also a new slider here. This is for that new mode. And everything else is pretty much the same. They just changed the names of some effects. So let's explain the modes first. We have IRFFB 360 smoothing and IRFFB 720 smoothing. This is the biggest latency uh, mode. So all the force feedback signal is going through the VJOY and IRFFB to the wheel. Game low latency means that the force feedback will be going from the game to the wheel, but it will be modified by the IRFFB. So there will be lower latency with this mode. The new mode Auto FFB 360 smoothing will change automatically between those two modes. So that's why we have this new slider here. This is telling IRFFB when to switch the modes. This is the speed in uh, miles per hour. So let me explain. When you are going fast, the mode you will have will be the IRFFB smoothing. So the latency will be 29 milliseconds. But when you are approaching a slow corner, you need better latency and better reaction, faster reactions. So you have to uh, set the speed in which you want to switch the mode to game low latency. This is only recommended for uh, road courses because on high speed corners like on ovals, this is not recommended. You will have always uh, the high latency mode on because you are not slowing down on ovals. So this will benefit only road racers. And for the ovals, I will go for game low latency mode. You have to play with this slider. So maybe go through the track and uh, check at what speed you are approaching the corner and set the slider to the desired speed. To explain the latency between uh, all the modes, we have here a little table and it's showing you how far you will travel with the car in different speeds until you get the force feedback effect. So we can see that the game force feedback directly from the iRacing has a four milliseconds latency. You see, if you're traveling 100 miles per hour, you will go 0.59 feet until you get the signal to your wheel. The middle column is for the low latency game mode in IRFFB and it is 15 milliseconds. So you can compare without the IRFFB, you will travel 0.59 feet and uh, with the IRFFB, low latency mode, you will travel 2.2 feet. So it's a big difference. And with the IRFFB mode, 
you will travel almost 3.25 feet until you get the signal from uh, the game to your wheel. That's why the new auto FFB mode is beneficial because you will be switching between 15 milliseconds and 29 milliseconds. Minimum force is what it was before. For the wheels with uh, less than 2 newton meters of torque, uh, you have to set the minimum force for maybe 1 or 2. And for the wheels with the higher torque or direct drive wheels, leave it on zero. Max force is basically the strength of the force feedback and it's still opposite to what you think. If you go higher, you will have less force feedback force and if you go lower, you will have more force feedback. So you have to play with it and uh, set it for each car. Damping, this setting will be removed in future versions and it should be on zero, so we can skip this. Bump intensity, it's uh, how you feel the bumps on the road. So also this will be different for each track because some tracks are smooth, some tracks are bumpy. So you need to spend a little time to adjusting it for each track. The effect timing affects the timing through the turn or when you should feel the effect start. It is not easy to feel the effect, but some drivers can feel it. I recommend uh, leave it on a three and play with it if you can feel the difference. The oversteer and understeer effects intensity are just the volume sliders for that effect. So if you go higher, you will feel it more. And if you go lower, you will feel it less. Simple as that. The oversteer effect was previously named as SOP seed of pants. Now it was renamed to oversteer effect. Understeer wheel force, uh, this is lowering the forced feedback force when you are uh, understeering the car in the corner. So when you are losing grip on the tires, the force feedback will be lower. If you set it on 100%, you will feel no difference. So play with it also. I have it on 70. It's different for each car. Next is check boxes. Uh, always check use car specific settings because IRFFB will save your settings for each car and also each track. Reducing the force while parked, uh, it's up to you. I have checked this so the wheel is not heavy when I'm parked. Run on startup, start minimized, this is up to you. And debug logging unchecked. Okay guys, I hope you liked this video. Subscribe and I will see you in the next one.